studded tires. I don't know if you can hear it, but no snow, no ice, just tearing up the road. Spring is here. Um, we can see it all around us and we didn't see one lick of snow where we live. We did though see some snow on our trip to Montana to, to Wheaton Labs. Paul's getting ready to kick off a new Kickstarter where he's doing a follow-up to his Rocket Mass Heater DVDs. I thought this would be awesome to get involved with because I've had so many troubles with with the information out there that I'm finding and trying to build one that will function in the bus and who better to learn from than these guys that are building these things consistently. We split the uh, Wheaton tour into two videos. First one, Rocket Mass Heaters and Stoves, and the second one is a lot of the uh, awesome oddball projects that he's been working on out there. So check this stuff out. This is our great Rocket Mass Heater in a teepee experiment. So of course the walls of a teepee are, you know, canvas thin, uh, not exactly a well insulated thing. So we've got a rocket mass heater in there. Last year we had a couple in there. It did get to 26 below. And in the morning when they got up and the fire had been out for eight hours, they uh, got dressed and went outside and were surprised at how cold it was outside. They said it, on the inside, it felt like it may have been 55 or so. This is our steampunk rocket mass heater of science. This is where we do all of our experiments. It's a pebble style, so we can dig out the pebbles really easy and make changes to try new and different things. So on this particular one, we've got a bypass. It does a double loop-de-loop -loop before going into this stuff. It can go out the wall here, out the wall here, or through the roof. We've got guillotine set up so that we can open and close the stuff to be able to shut it off or open it up, let the, let the stuff go through, let the exhaust go through. Um, this is a failed experiment. We won't talk about that. Um, there's the wood feed that actually starts about here and goes down inside. And um, this is what we call the bubble that goes over it. We did a bunch of experiments with that. This is an external air intake. I don't like the external air intake. Um, and so as a standard rocket mass heater, wood feed, uh, the wood stacks up here, the fire burns sideways, it goes up inside the riser, then comes down outside the barrel, and then gets channeled through the manifold into ducting down low, loop-de-loop, -loop, and up and out. That's the best. All right, so here's our mass. And when you stick your fingers down inside of it, it feels warm and hot. And warm and hot, right now there's not a fire, but it feels warm and hot right now. We stack our wood here, and then it helps to dry the wood even further, which makes for a faster, hotter, cleaner, more efficient burn. Huh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, maybe not. <laughs> it's like we need a snow shovel for this. Oh, it's a big gob of ice on it. All right, well, we haven't fired it up in a month or so, but what we have here and underneath this, this is like, ah. it's frozen to the ground. <laughs> what we have here is a very small rocket mass heater. So uh, there's a wood feed underneath this rock. Put your wood in, the fire burns sideways, there's a heat riser, goes down, goes in a loop through under my butt, and then up through this pipe. But this has some extra special stuff on it too. There's a hole right here. And um, we can do all kinds of cooking over that hole. So this is designed to be primarily for cooking, like a little outdoor barbecue kind of a thing. When we run it, what comes out of the hole is extremely clean. Um, totally clear, no smoke. Uh, because, of course, it's a, since it's using the rocket stove variation, but most rocket stoves have a problem in that their heat riser is only this tall. So this one's got a heat riser that's this tall. And um, because of that, then it can burn all the smoke and burn all the other stuff, and we get a very clean, clean, clean burn. So we do two things here. One is to use this as a, as a cooker, and we can cook all kinds of stuff on the surface. But we also use it as a smoker. We'll stick little bits of apple branches and apple wood in here, and it'll smoke that apple wood and get the smoke up into the smoker. This has been all dismantled for the winter. 
but once it warms up, we'll hook it back up and we call this the ring of fire. And so it's a rocket mass heater, so I'm sitting on the butt warmer part. And um, I believe that what, so the pipe will go over here and then you'll be able to see the fire through glass on this side and glass on this side. Uh, the fire burns sideways and you'll see it burning sideways through the window here. And then it goes up under the riser, back down on the outside of the barrel. And then uh, the duct takes it under my butt, back around, and it'll come up in this little tiny chimney right there. The ring of fire. Fire visuals and butt warmer all in a rocket mass heater. Sometimes we call this space the auditorium, and sometimes we call this space the shop. Um, so, you know, at the moment, it's the shop. <laughs> but uh, I, think, I think everybody will agree right now you feel plenty warm in here. Um, we've got this batch box rocket mass heater burning. <clears throat> this uh, is something where um, it was built by Peter Vandenberg at our uh, Innovators event. And he had a fancy pants little meter that he could measure the exhaust on this. And uh, he got uh, uh, CO2 emissions of zero measured from this for probably about three quarters of the burn. So this is probably the most efficient um, heating device ever. Uh, I've never heard of anything like a, a natural gas or a wood stove or anything else burning this cleanly. So uh, it's a very interesting design, um, a little bit different from your typical rocket mass heaters, but hey, that's what an Innovators event is supposed to bring out. So this thing heats this space very fast. The mass is fairly long, but um, we don't really lean on the mass too terribly much. The mass does help to warm uh, the space and keep it warm when the fire is out. But boy, this thing just heats this space up really, really fast. So rather than having a J-tube where you put your wood into the top and then the fire burns sideways, you'll put a bunch of wood inside of this and burn it in one big batch really fast. And so instead of having a, a, a burn tunnel that goes into the riser, this is going to have this narrow path that the flames are going to go into and it's going to help mix them. And so I kept trying to tell Peter Vandenberg that what he was doing was making uh, a, a Shirley Temple effect. And he insists that no, it's, it's a ram's horn. Um, so then that helps to mix the flames with the, the smokes and gases to further combust. And then it goes up into the riser. This riser only goes this high. And then the gases come up here, they mix up some more, they come down, they go into this other barrel. Inside this barrel, there's a whole bunch of bricks. So there's a continued mass inside of this barrel. Then the exhaust goes into this bench and on down over to the exhaust on the end and up through the roof. And I'm standing too close to it, it's way too hot. <laughs> right, so I think this is borosilicate glass on the top, um, which is the kind of glass that's used for wood stoves. Um, this is a temporary thing. We're going to replace that with a proper door eventually, but that's just DuraBoard, which um, is extremely insulative for high temperature scenarios. So if you guys found any of those stoves interesting and you'd like to learn more, head on over to permies.com. That's the forum Paul set up. So if you're interested in that Kickstarter, I'll put the link below. Go check that out. Get educated before you build one of these stoves and don't just uh, pull a plan off the internet and uh, invest a few days of your life and uh, possibly hundreds of dollars in materials to make one of these things. 